Today's video is sponsored by Laney. More on them later in the video. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the entire process of how I created polar copies. I'm going to show you how I designed, created the boxes, I'm going to show you how to get them printed and assembled. Then I'm going to move over to how I created one-to-one -one copies of your Polaroid photos using 4x6 dye sublimation printers such as the Laney. I've done a few reviews and comparisons on dye sublimation printers. As you guys know, the Laney is always one out. And to make polar copies, this was actually the easiest printer of all to use. I'll explain more later. So sit back, enjoy today's video. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I made the boxes for the polo copies. It's actually super, super simple to do. And I'm gonna show you how right now. So what I did was I took a empty box of regular Polaroid film. I have a bunch of these laying around. Uh, I use them for props and things. So I actually keep all of my boxes. But what I did was is I took the box and cut it open, flattened it out, flat Polaroid box and I scanned it into the computer. I don't have a, f a large flatbed scanner. So what I did was I used the uh, Epson portable scanner. I did a video on this already. If you guys want to check it out, I really like this thing. It's pretty useful and I have more videos on this coming soon. But if you want to see the full uh, breakdown of this, I'll leave a link in the description below for you. Now I decided not to use the little hang tag here uh, just because I just didn't. So once I scanned it in, it looked like this. And, and it scanned in pretty good. This is straight out of the scanner. It's slightly crooked. So what I did was I brought it into Photoshop. So what I did was is I cut it out in Photoshop and then I made a highlighted section of the box and made a new layer and then simply just added a stroke outline of the image onto a new layer. And I got this super easy. And now I have a template of the box shape. So what the outline gives me the shape of the box so I know where I can fill in all of you know my graphics and design and whatnot. And from there, I just went in and started tweaking it to create my own version of the box. I wanted to have the essence of a uh, real Polaroid box. So I just changed the color, changed up the name a little bit, had some fun. There's a couple quick tricks here I'm going to show you that helped me in creating this. I made the guidelines here, as you can see, which is simple as uh, having your ruler up. And if you don't have the rulers, uh, you go up to view and you scroll down and make sure the ruler uh, is set or just control R on the keyboard. And it's as simple as just clicking the, the ruler holding it and dragging out a new line. And so what I did was I added in the fold lines of where the fold would be in the, uh, the on, or on the box itself. So that way I, when I was going ahead and creating the, the graphics for this, I knew where to line things up and where not to put stuff. <laughs> but here's another cool trick. As you can see, the box is gonna be folded into a three dimensional shape. So one side has to be upside down, one side has to be right side up because it's gonna fold together. How do you edit this upside down? Well, it's actually super simple. If you push the R button on your keyboard, it brings up the rotational tool and you can actually rotate it on its axis. And if you hold down shift and click, it will rotate evenly. So you can get it straight up and down, side to side, all that great stuff. It doesn't change the layout of the image itself in your Photoshop document. And that's just the general, like gist of how I did the box. There is one extra step that we'll take into account and that is getting it ready to be printed. Now this is larger than a standard eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And I prepped it in Photoshop just to do that. And so what I did was I went up to file I went new and I went over to the pixels and turned it into inches and I went width 11 height 17 and then I 300 resolution is perfectly fine and I hit create and so over here all I did was I moved the image over to the new project file I'm sure there's a much better way to do this but what I do is I just flatten the image hit OK click it, drag it over, and now it's in here. And then I just come back over to the original one so I don't forget and undo that option. So now I have all my layers back. <laughs> I'm sure there's a better way of doing it, but there it is. But from here, do not change the, the size of it because it is in one-to-one -one ratio size of the box. So when you go to print it, it will be in the correct size of the original box. 
box. It's pretty cool. But I was able to actually fit, and I use Control J, and it duplicates my layer, and I was able to line up two to one piece of paper. Look at that. So from here, all I did was is I saved it out uh, to uh, as a JPEG, put it on a flash drive, and took it down to Office Depot and had them print them for me. Pro tip here for you though, make sure when you have these printed that you tell them do not alter this in any way. <laughs> because if they try to add a border or if they try to uh, fill the image to the piece of paper, it's not gonna work, right? It's gonna be the wrong size. Now the paper that I uh, had them printed on was eight point cardstock gloss and that is nearly identical to what polaroid uses it might be slightly thicker or heavier uh, of material than what polaroid does but i don't know it feels pretty much exact now i'm going to show you how to cut these out and make fold lines in your boxes it's actually super cool and super easy to do all right so now i've designed the box how did i make the box Pretty simple, I'm gonna show you. I wish I had saved one though for on camera. I didn't think that far ahead. So for demonstration purposes, I wanna use the Polaroid, the one they actually have. So the next step after you cut it out of the paper, you create these uh, fold lines or edges and that is called scoring. You wanna score where the flaps are gonna be to form you know, a box. And you just do that along on the sides here and here and then across the top twice on the bottom in the middle part of there and then once on the bottom and this right here i got this at michael's yeah michael's crafts the uh, craft store um it was i think 30 dollars. it's a cutter has a razor blade uh it folds out i don't recommend this one as a cutter it kind of sucks to be honest the best part of this right here is it has this like the, their slits straight vertical lines that's for scoring check this out on the bottom of it it has this little plastic tool and has like a little rounded tip and when you put your piece of paper right in here you can take this it presses it into one of the grooves slide it right down all the way to the bottom and you have a absolutely perfectly pressed seam to fold over it this thing for that functionality made it all worth it the cutter sucks though so i would recommend getting this for just scoring paper uh, it does a Excellent job. And I'll leave links to it in the description if I can find one. It is on uh, Michael's. If I can find one on Amazon or something, I will do that. But it's called We Are Memory Keepers. Worth noting though, there is a wrong and right way to do this. Uh, you want to make sure that when you seam these, the box is facing upwards and you're doing the scoring right on the front. Very important. So now that the box is scored, it is ready to be assembled like the Avengers. Assemble. And now I tried multiple different ways to do this and I'm sure there's better ways out there. Maybe you know one that works better than this. But I tried several things. I tried a classic glue stick. I've tried a classic rubber cement. Uh, I've tried double-sided tape and double-sided tape one out. All I've done is use double-sided tape on the inside of the side flaps and then when I bring it on over it just would come in and then I would just press it into place on the sides and then I'll get the box just like so. So from here, I just moved on to printing the photos. And for, to print these, I tried a couple different options. I tried some online photo printing. Look at that, really, really nice. Except um, they date and stamp on the back and you can actually see that through the image on, on, on the white frames. That's no good, so that was out. So I decided to go with the Laney photo printer, four by six. Uh, Dye sublimation process, super awesome printer. And I did use the Canon Selfie. I do prefer the Laney, I'll get into those details later. But to prep these for printing, we gotta head on back over to Photoshop because there's a couple of things to keep in mind when printing these to make them a one-to-one -one scale of an original. So let's head on over to Photoshop to make that happen. It's simple, trust me. Oh, hang on guys, one second. I wanted to take a quick moment and talk about today's sponsor, and that is Laney. You've seen this before. You know how much I'm in love with this printer. It is so freaking cool. And this is their new printer. Yeah, this is the M200. It actually has a built-in battery, so you can take this on the go. But basically, if you don't know what this is, it's a dye sublimation four x six wireless printer. And it was pivotal in creating 
pull of copies. Quality of print you get off of this thing is insane. I've already done a complete overview of this printer. If you wanna see that, there's a link in the description below, but I'll go over a couple key features that I'm absolutely in love with. First up, the design. Come on, I always say this, looks like an Xbox, and you know how much I love Xbox. Please, PlayStation users, leave your hate comments down below. Next feature of this thing is the magnetic paper tray, but more specifically, the fact that the paper tray is sealed, keeps dust out of getting inside your photos. You guys know, dust is an enemy. When it comes to dye sublimation printers, you get a hair in there or some dust, it ruins the photo. What? One of the last key features I love about this is the M200, the fact that it has a built-in battery. So freaking cool. I love traveling, I love doing things in the field, and I can do that with this printer at no extra cost like some of the other competitors. And the paper isn't even that expensive. You get 40 photos for 20 bucks. I think that's a really, really sweet deal. If you guys want to grab one of these, there is a link in the description below. I highly, highly recommend checking it out. Now, back to your regular scheduled programming. Let's make some polar copies. All right, we are back here in Photoshop. So how do you get your images to print on these printers? Super simple. Just go into Photoshop, make a new file. What you're gonna do here is you're gonna set the uh, the project size to inches and you're gonna do a four by six vertical. So four inches wide by six inches tall, 300 DPI is plenty and hit create. So once you're in here, you have a blank slate. You just drop in your photos, right? Not exactly. If you're using the Laney printer, yeah, you can actually uh, do it pretty easily. Uh, the Canon one is a little more tricky and I'll show you in just a second. But what I like to do is, is I like to make the background black because I'm putting images on top of it. It makes it so much easier. Cut them out so you actually have an edge to cut. <sighs> Learn that the hard way. So here is another trick you will, will want to do to get your images uh, ready to print in true one-to-one -one size. File new, go to uh, the same window here, but make sure it's in inches, and you want to go width 3.5 by 4.25 and leave it at 300, that's fine, and hit create. This is the size of a Polaroid image. Depending on what scanner you use, you might be able to skip this process. Sometimes you can't. Um, depends on some uh, lot of factors. I don't know what you're using, so I'm gonna show you this just in case you run into this problem. So now I'm bringing in a photo into Photoshop, and here's something that might, a problem you might run into. So as you can see here we go, I brought in an image, dropped it in. Uh, it's not quite filling the page, and that do, is due to cropping things during scanning processes. You wanna make sure the photos are the same size every time. So I'm just gonna scale it up to fit, and now I have a true to size photo uh, of an actual Polaroid image. So what you can do here is you can then save it out and make a folder with you know, true to size photos, or uh, if you're just gonna go straight to um, making these ready to print, you can just have your other project file open right here. Three is your four by six black background, and you're gonna wanna flatten this image, and then you can just grab it you can click the image itself or click the layer and then you just gonna go oh, drag it over to the other one and then drop it in. And now you have your image ready for print. Look at that, it's a full ready to go sized photo. Pretty sweet, pretty simple. It's, it's tedious if you're doing multiple images. It's pretty quick if just doing a couple, but if you're doing like 40 pictures, yeah, it's gonna take a little while. <laughs> then from here, you can just save it out and you can name it wherever you want and you wanna save it as JPEG. I would make a separate folder with just these ready to go prints. Um, it just makes things a little more organized and simple. But there was one issue that I had with the Canon CP1300 uh, that I'm gonna show you how to fix. What the Canon would do is it would slightly, ever so slightly, increase the image. When I tried to print it out, it wasn't a proper one-to-one -one picture of your Polaroid. So through trial and error, I figured out a simple solution. But after I scanned in my images, put them into Photoshop, shrunk them down ever so slightly, and then printed it out on the printer to see if it worked. And I found a exact match. So right here is the true to size for your Canon selfie CP1300. It's a mouthful. And you can cut this out to full scale size one-to-one -one ratio of your actual Polaroid pictures, which is pretty sweet. I did not have this problem at all on the Laney. <laughs> it just worked. And what was really cool about the Laney is I could take the scanner right here, scan these directly into my phone and hit print and it's worked flawlessly one-to-one -one ratio. And I got a fun idea to utilize that feature with both products coming soon. So consider subscribing if you want to see that.
Now that we have our photos printed, with the quality of the prints, I just love them. They're amazing. Uh, the dye sublimation process printers are super good, and I'll leave links in the description to pick up my favorite ones. But Laney is my go-to, honestly. Flawlessly love it. But as you can see, it's a little floppy. And I wanted it to be a little bit more substantial through trial and error. I've tried different types of paper and backing for these and I landed on watercolor like paper. So I would glue the photo to the cardstock watercolor paper and I tried multiple different things. Uh, I've tried the glue stick. I've tried double sided tape. You can see the seams of the tape. So that was no go. Uh, the best one was the spray adhesive, uh, it's like Super 77, or this one for instance is just Elmer's glue. However, it's messy and you can get overspray onto the photos, so that's a no go. But the glue stick actually curls the image as it's drying and so you have to keep it under pressure. Cue the Queen song. I, I didn't like that, so I stopped using that one and I decided to go with uh, rubber cement. It doesn't matter if it gets onto the image because this stuff wipes right off uh, afterwards. It is time consuming to you know brush it all on there, take some time. And it's not too expensive, a bottle of it's like a couple of bucks. But for the next round of these, I actually found a better solution. I found adhesive sheets. Uh, it's double-sided tape basically, but in a like eight and a half by 11 size. So I could peel one side, stick the photo on, and then peel the back of it and stick it on to this, cut it out, boom, done, fast, easy. A little more expensive though, but it's totally worth it because this was the one of the longest processes. And as you notice, I didn't cut the photo out prior to putting it on the backer, and that makes it so much easier to cut it out. Plus, you only cut it out one time. And I'd get something just like this, like that. Perfect, look at that, super, super nice. And then it was ready for the scratcher. Scratcher was also a time consuming process and the most expensive part of making these polar copies. They're on Amazon, I'll leave a link below, but they, they, they run a few bucks. So I calculated everything out. For the scratch film, it costs uh, $2.50 to make eight photos. <laughs> yeah. But once I got it on there, photo's done. And it goes into the cartridge, ready to be boxed up. But there's actually two more quick steps for this, and that is, the fake dark slide that goes inside. I found these, they're the perfect, perfect density, thickness. They feel just like in a, a real uh, Polaroid dark slide. I found multicolors. This is a 110 pound paper. I found this at, uh, I think Michael's. I mostly got, most of my stuff was at Michael's. I went to like Craft Warehouse a couple times, but that's about it. Most of it came from Michael's. I can get six. Uh, dark slides to one piece of paper, which is really cool, cuts down on cost. And I think it's fun to be able to have colorful dark slides. And I think Polaroid should do that too. I think that'd be super fun, especially with the colored frame packs. Just saying. If this is to add some fun, I'll add a little note and then I'll sign it. There we go, make some art, baby. Pretty cool. And there's one last step and that is to put a magnet on the back. This I did get at Craft Warehouse. It's just a box of sheet magnets. Um, wasn't too expensive. It was like, I get eight or nine dollars or something like that. This is 12 by 24. I just cut some strips and they have adhesive on the back and you just stick them on. And now the pack is ready to go. Take the pack, slide it in the box. And then I have a checklist. I'm, I didn't really show you how to do that because that's just a piece of paper really. And I just slide it in there and I throw my sticker in there and it's ready to be shipped out. All these packs are ready to be shipped. Look at that. Ooh, a couple more here. Look at that. That's a lot of them. <laughs> These took a long time to make. And when you mess up, it hurts really bad. <laughs> Get big air bubbles in these. This is literally a couple dollar mistake. That sucks. <laughs> It's not difficult to do, but it's definitely a time-consuming process, that's for sure. I do have a lot more plans with Pola Copies. I'm probably gonna have to change the name because I want to do these a little bit larger coming up in the future, a little bit better. And I'm assuming I'll get hit with a, you know, a copyright claim from, <laughs> from Polaroid. But I do have a few left uh, as of right now, the day of the recording of this video. So if you want to get one for yourself, there is a link in the description below. And remember the whole goal of these isn't for me to like get rich or make money off of them. I'm literally just trading them in essentially. You buy a pack of this, I go buy a pack of Polaroid film. So it's actually helping Polaroid as well. And just a quick shout out to Laney again for sponsoring today's video. Their printer definitely made the process of getting one to one full scale ratio photos for this project done so much easier than 
Cannon and the other ones. Whew, I love this thing, as you guys know, and I have a really cool, fun project idea coming soon that utilizes this and the Epson scanner. So consider subscribing if you want to see that. And if you want to dive even deeper into this world and get something shipped to your door every single month, consider joining the monthly print club. There's a link in the description below as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Now, get out there, make some art.